Rick Santorum, I've been sitting around and listening to you say some really stupid shit for the past few months. So now it's time for me to put in my two cents. So sit your ass down and get ready for some knowledge and wisdom, boy. I just noticed that the light coming in from the window was a bit too bright for my satisfaction. So I made a few adjustments and hopefully it's up to everyone's expectations. So anyways, like I was saying, Rex Santorum, you backwoods motherfucker. You're from a state called Pennsylvania, but as far as I'm concerned, you sound just like somebody who comes from the state of Mississippi. And that's no offense to those of you out there from the state of Mississippi who might have an IQ above 70. I'm sure there's some of you out there. You're probably in the minority, but you're still there nonetheless. It's kind of puzzling to me that a man from a northern state can be this ignorant. However, I'm being kind of a hypocrite because I've also said before that, you know, the South isn't always full of ignorance and you have cities like Atlanta that are full of diversity and yada, yada, yada. But Santorum is just kind of an oddball considering where he's from. Okay, so here's the whole thing is that Santorum is literally obsessed, and I mean obsessed, not even using the word lightly, over gay sex. This man literally thinks about two gay men taking one's penis and shoving up the other one's anal cavity like that every fucking day. The man, pre the man fucking dreams about it every night. And so you want to pass all of this, he wants to pass all this legislation um, against same-sex marriage. Well, my question is, how the fuck does anybody out there think that that actually affects their personal lives? No, unless you're gay yourself and you're just in a closet and you're afraid that, you know, the thought of man-on-man -man action might give you a little tingle at the tip of your little tiny prick, which you try to compensate so with your gas-guzzling pickup trucks and then you complain and blame Lava for high gas prices. Well, you know, there's Volts, Priuses, Honda Civics and shit like that that you can buy that get good gas mileage. But no, we're men, we're Americans, and Americans were born to guzzle all the oil in the world because God provides. God just provides everything, doesn't he? There's just a plentiful source of oil, and God will just dip the oil buckets down and just spill them into our tanks someday if we pray hard enough and if we were like Rick Santorum. Because everybody knows that the gays are the blame for high gas prices and everything else in this world. I wish, I wish that you would come walking past me one day. I would spit in your face. I really would. Because as a gay American, it is absolutely insulting to me that you have the audacity to sit here and use all of this disrespectful rhetoric towards me. I'm too good to listen to that, and I'm not satisfied with it. I demand an apology out of you, Rick Santorum, this instant. You want to stay in me, bitch? The nerve some of these Republicans talking the way they do about us as a community. Now, we have been belittled enough. Do you not realize how many gay and lesbian, bisexual, and transgender youth in this nation commit suicide every day because of bullying? Bullying that the more closed-minded in our society thinks somehow builds character or toughens somebody up. I'm sorry, but no. A human being can only take so much of that crap. Trust me, I know. I experienced it as well, from kindergarten all the way through high school. And a lot of us don't finish high school, not because we're stupid, not because we're lazy and don't have any drive to do anything in life, but because we can simply cannot handle any more. Not because we're weak, but because a person can only take so much, like I said. So why is it that we have politicians, a grown adults, who are irresponsible enough to go public with this kind of rhetoric, well knowing that you could actually influence somebody out there to think that it is okay to go over to so-and-so, call them a faggot, a queer, and push them around, push them into a locker, and make them feel like they're safe or even their life is in danger. Because they heard a grown man, an adult, on TV running for the president in this country talking ill of somebody who happens to be gay. Now, how irresponsible is that, Rick Santorum? Do you want your own children to grow up thinking that it is appropriate to discriminate against or to think ill of somebody because of their sexual orientation? Well, of course you do! Because you think that you were anointed by God or something to spread your hatred 
and your contempt into our society. Well, I'm here to tell you otherwise, buddy. I ain't gonna let it happen. People like me will continue to fight and speak out against people like you until the day I die. That leads me to my next message. I have a very special message to all the gay youth of America out there. Whether you're gender questioning, whether you're a gay man, a lesbian, or a bisexual, and somebody out there is talking shit to you, use this and this and just punch them right in the nose. Now you may get your ass whipped, you may go through a lot of pain, you may get yourself in trouble, but that other person will have a scar to remember you by. And that's all that matters. The fact that you stood up for yourself means everything in the world. So don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. Don't be afraid to feel a little bit of pain. Grab, well, I wouldn't say grab your balls because lesbians don't have those, but find the strength inside of yourself to stand up for yourself and to make a damn difference. I'm not saying that violence is okay, but self-defense is not violence. That's an important thing to remember, kids. So always beat the fuck out of people who talk shit to you and don't ever take no disrespect. Does that make you mad, Rick Santorum, that I encourage the youth of America to stand up for themselves? <laughs> well, that's just too fucking bad, bitch. Suck my dick. Santorum wants to ban porn. I dare you to fucking try to get into my computer and control what websites I can look at. If I want to go on the X-Tube and watch a man hanging upside down getting his nuts electrocuted and jack off to it, that is my goddamn business. None of yours, motherfucker. The Constitution protects my right to look at porn. It's considered free speech. And I'm an adult, so it's legal. Abortion. Women should always have the right to have an abortion. I don't think that there's very many women out there who get giddy and giggle and have an abortion party and get excited over having an abortion. A lot of times, it's just what they have to do at that moment in their lives. And no, it's not irresponsible. A woman should always have the option open to her to have an abortion. Not because I believe in being gruesome or killing babies, but because I believe that life does not begin until birth. Some people may disagree, that's fine. But we can't overturn Roe v. Wade just because a few people out there get butt hurt over the idea of a woman having control of their bodies. This is the 21st century, people. Okay, women's suffrage did not happen for no reason. Make the right decision this year, America. Do you want some idiot bigot or flip-flopper like Romney in office? Or do you want a man who's actually strengthened the economy after the disaster that was known as George W. Bush? A man who has ended two wars ended the ridiculous and discriminatory don't ask, don't tell policy, thus allowing our soldiers to serve without having to walk on eggshells and lie about who they are. Do you want him in office or do you want somebody who thinks that it's wrong to be born gay? Think about that for a second. I'm talking about my gay Republicans out there too. Or actually, I don't want to say my because I'm not one of you. But there's some food for thought.